was seen as set at the docks. Thomas Williams is down there, taking in the evening sights, looking around, trying to figure out what to do about Mr. O'Connell and his tension between Mr. Christensen, his businesses and the other practices that he has to do. He is not sure what direction he needs to go in. He is wrestling with the fact of does he follow up with his prince's blood hunt with blood hunt and his rules? Does he go after Mr. Shaw for being a murderer of another kindred upholding the original six traditions? Williams finds himself lost and wandering through the city as he is down at the docks. He comes across the gentleman who seems to be staring off of one of the furthest piers, staring off into the lake over at a castle. The scene begins. Oh, one hell of an evening. I'm not sure what the what I'm supposed to be doing with my time or what I need to be doing. I guess life is just one of those things you've got to check. Life, go figure. Life is not something you can just do or be part of, especially when you have an unlife. And he continues to mumble to himself as he walks towards the the pier where the gentleman is standing, looking like he might want to feed on this gentleman because he does seem kind of parched. As he gets closer, he notices two pointed ears, and one of them flicks, and he turns to see Raznox's face and his mouth, which is all of his fangs are teeth, or all of his teeth are fangs. It's like a shark. Oh, oh, oh. Mr. Raz, I have not, uh, not actually seen your true face. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you have a dental plan, I hope? Quite good one. I can change if it will make you easier. No, I, I think this evening, for some reason, it feels that truth be to oneself is what is in order. Did you hear the wolf cry about 30 minutes ago? I thought I heard the wolf, but I was sure I was just delusioning it. Uh, it's not something that I particularly thought was real. I followed it down this direction. I think that's why I ended up here. I'm waiting to see if my research has come to pay off. Your research? Uh, what's happening out there? Is there something specific? I assume you've heard of Mr. Han Tan Lee in the Kuei Jin. Williams reaches down to his leg and touches his newly created living leg. And he says, yes, I, I heard of that creature. What is to become of him? What has happened? I don't know, but I informed my clan that if they used a metal stake, it would have severe effects upon him. Excellent. There's some splashing around in the water down below the docks. Soggy. Suddenly at the top of one of the posts, you see one of the pilings that's driven into the water. You see the frog-like hands dragging the body and it's soggy up. And he sort of lightly jumps over to the dock and climbs over the rail in a fluid motion. His uh, clothing obviously dripping with uh, water and stuff and kind of a smug expression on his face. Oh, soggy, you seem to be in spirits this evening. Uh, what has happened? Ah, uh, uh, well, we shall not see any more of Hon Tan Lee. No, we shall not, no. No. He, he has not only been killed, but I saw his soul ripped to shreds by the Giovanni. Yes. Yes. And his body ripped to shreds by a uh, lupine. I never thought I would be happy to see such a thing, but there it was. Yes. The so prince the does, in fact, a have a monster in his, uh, in his keeping. And it does do his bidding most carefully, yes. Yes. So the rumors be true of the prince and his lupine. Well, that is, that's a little bit more intimidating, I guess, for his stead. So the Han, Tan Lee, is dis dis destroyed, ripped apart, is spit. 
that seems to be uh, one hell of a way to go. Did my information prove useful, Soggy? Indeed it did, indeed. Yes, I shall let uh, Mr. Morgan tell you the details of how uh, exactly useful it was. Very useful, yeah. A shark grin crosses Raz's face. Yes, yeah, so Hon Tanley is no more. Unfortunately, yes, Mr. Uh, uh, Caleb, uh, uh, no, Mr. Mr. Fast Eddie, yes, Fast Eddie is no more. Yes, he, he too was in cahoots with uh, Hon Tan Lee as they came to destroy the prince and found the prince uh, well protected by those around him. We, we uh, uh, Morgan and I, were following uh, Hon Tan Lee as he went out towards the prince's island, and we got there soon after he did. And in the fight that had already begun, yes, yes. Well, I guess it's best that the Kui Jin monster and whatever it was is destroyed and no longer a threat to this vast city. Brings into mind, though, that uh, there's still a lot of unanswered things. In the evening air, especially now that it has seemed to be done raining for quite a few nights, and it seems to finally be lightening up with the moon as much as it can in this world of darkness. Yes, yes, uh, things shall go on. I, for one, have a great deal to do in rebuilding and work to be done underground. There was a uh, rather a sharp earthquake uh, caused by the demon that needs a great deal of effort to repent. Yes. Mm. And I will say that one more effort of my penance may be done. I did not add too much to the effort, but uh, I will say that perhaps I was a bit of a distraction. Yes. As the three continue to discuss about the nights of the events, Williams looks over to the listening and looks over across into the water and notices something floating across the water, something green coming from the direction, moving with the current. And it just goes by. Mr. Sage, you had said that, uh, Sage, you have said that you uh, wanted to speak with me at some point. I got a message from you. What was that in regards to? You? Hmm, hmm. Well, it was just kind of a personal matter, uh, having to do, do with you know, family, one might say. Well, Mr. Knox is aware of this. Uh, it's, um, oh, it, it is a, an interesting and perhaps even a sad tale. Uh, I wonder if you feel you have the time to hear about it. I, I have the rest of my own life to have time, so yes, I, I have plenty of time, I guess you could say. Good, good, good. I would say that you do not know this. Uh, I don't believe you know this. It would seem very far, far-fetched if you knew this. But... Uh, you actually are a kind of relative to me. Shall I explain? We have relation? Yes, yes, well. You see, long ago, I, I was... Um, soon after I was embraced, with, within paltry 50 years, I met another kindred who was uh, very fond of creating many, many children. And uh, constantly, uh, this, was, this was before the tradition of uh, progeny was so closely guarded. Before the tradition of progeny was so closely uh, managed, the 
Ah, this this creature would make children and, and almost at once tire of them and eat them and then pretend that some other thing had happened. That they had made some crime or had been killed by someone else. Uh, she was a monster. Well, she wanted to take one of my own grandsons as her child. And I did my best to intervene and to request that she did not do so. Her reaction was to destroy all of my male grandchildren and my male son and my sons. That is a long story, I know, it is difficult. The end of it is that only the daughters of my line uh, produce progeny and they immortal progeny I mean of course and they they lasted quite a while but it seems like uh, line after line was destroyed until only two lines remained and one of those two lines was ended and then the other nearly had a, had a fairly close time to that yes and uh, it was your wife, Mr. Williams. Your wife and your daughter. The last of my mortal line. You mean my, re my wife, Rebecca? Your wife, Rebecca, yes. Was my grandchild, my great grandchild, many times, yes. Many generations later. Well, that is definitely makes a reference to a small world after all, doesn't it, Sergeant? And so it does. So it does. Yeah. So I guess that makes us cousins through marriage? No, no. More, more great, great, great. 25 times later. Great, great grandson-in-law. Huh. So I can call you Grandpa Soggy, but I just couldn't talk if I wanted it. <laughs> you could. You could. I would, I would allow it. And in fact, I would uh, treasure it. Yes, so I would. I guess would. I'll call you Pappy. Yes, that would be, that would be very good. Yes. Yes. Well, that is very interesting. Have you have, has my daughter Patricia been told about this yet? Or I have that with her. Yes, I've I've let her know that uh, that this is so. How long ago did you tell her about this? I guess is the next question. Only, only about uh, a month, I think. What? It is odd that we have not seen her since. She, uh, uh, she ended up getting called away. I have her in one of the other cities, visiting one of my contacts over in uh, oh, San Diego. Oh, in oh that is that is gratifying. Yes. Uh, well, I guess, Mister Pepe. Or Grand Papasage, or I'll play with it and see <laughs> see where my where it rolls off my tongue. I guess uh, this evening's has I'm not sure how to uh, not sure in what direction that I should go. Sage, maybe you can help me here, and you, Mister Knox, as well. You know current events, and you know the things that are going on with Seth and Shaw, and, and all the and all of that, and the Primogens. Mm. Uh, I, 100% okay and confident that my Lady Orchid will be safe and there will be no problems with her whatsoever. Yeah. I also worry, though, that I'm not sure I, I am loyal to the Prince. I have no reason not to be. Uh, he, he may have a few extra extra traditions, but uh, he's upholding the original six, and that's what's important to me. I still don't know what to think about Sarah Fischal and the fact that he destroyed another kindred, your primogen. 
yes. out of all of it, and that's still a destruction of another map. It is, it is. However, the circumstances in which it happened was uh, regrettable, and there was a payment of sorts made. A primogen for a primogen. Raz, sure has been, can... Raz has been paying attention, but he's been watching the green thing in the water, and as it the current brings it by the dock, he reaches out a his long fingers and snatches it out of the water. And what is this? He holds it up. Oh, that's interesting. That's that, that, believe it or not, guys, what you hold in your hands is a dragon. It looks like a scarf to me. <laughs> oh, the Han Tanley creature had it wound around him, and he commanded it to come to life and go chase the prince to do him in. It does have the mark of the thrashing dragons. Hmm. I shall have to see what I can do with this. And it he... is torn, but you should be able to repair it, I think. And he stuffs it away in the backpack that he's always wearing. It should be of value to someone. That seems to be quite a nice little artifact you've got to remember this, uh, and your job well done, I guess you could say. Hmm. I was tired of seeing Kindred die to these creatures. Yes, yes, not to mention the inherent psychological damage, no doubt, uh, that each has received from the so-called gift. That they had to give. Yes. Yes, I am still reaping the benefits of their little, their little soiree with myself when he repaired my leg. But again, I am not sure, Sage. Do we follow through with a plan to bring Shaw in? Do we wait? There is very locked any direction to go in. I have uh, no idea, and I, I guess I'm going to a, another one of my equal as far as uh, position within the Camarilla and uh, I have no idea. Indeed, it is a conundrum. I do not know what to do with Shaw. Uh, myself, I would give it a while. See if the Tremere will relent on their flaunting of the Prince's decrees. Uh, See what will happen. See what this Archon has to say. If anyone would uphold the traditions of the Prince's Domain, one would think it would be an Archon. But a Tremere Archon, maybe a different matter. I think that I will put it off indefinitely. I would recommend a similar course of action to anyone who wanted more peace than difficulty. Well, I, would, I would be fine with having not Shaw be destroyed for the destruction of a peritre, and I would almost prefer to be able to have him found, staked, and laid into a coffin and buried underground for a few years or days, probably years, for him to reflect on the destruction of another. Hmm. A time of quiet, quiet reflection would be good for anyone. I have done it myself uh, on occasion. Perhaps without the stake, but certainly with reason and forethought. So maybe, maybe I, 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 I continue to do business as usual for the norm of whatever is happening and make no difference and uh, stick to what is needed to be done which is going to be a uh, finance stuff and adventure and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you I'm not a financial kindred. I've mm. never been. I am more of a salesman. I am more of a voice. I am more of a uh, spreader of information. I guess you could say I'm a hoppy <laughs> if you will. Uh, but uh, I think that we will have to wait to see the coming nights to see what is going to happen here. I, I am I'm glad that the Nosferatu and the Venture have a very strong uh, standing with each other, I have to say. Uh, and I like the way things are headed, but it's just a matter of uh, 
what the next step is. Indeed, indeed. Perhaps you should keep an eye on these errant m mortals who've been running around. I think you should keep an eye on uh, your clanmate, uh, Mr. Duskman. He keeps having his employees uh, see him hmm, using kindred terminology. And he uses his uh, vampire skills, his kindred skills, in a most clumsy manner. Has he done something again that I'm not aware of? What what has Zarek Duskman gotten himself into now? Oh, he, one of his employees I met in a, uh, you know, in, in in a drinking establishment. He started talking all sorts of things that were really quite dangerous to him. It was in my mind to destroy him at once. At I figured a little merciful work with a mortal might do me some good or might do somebody some good. Not everyone has to die for simply knowing something or suspecting someone. And so I took him and let him taste of the blood and explained a few things and sent him on to Duskman to finish the job. But Duskman really must be less clumsy. I will have a word on him and I will discuss. He needs to remember that if he has those type of situations, that he really must get a hold of me. And everyone, it seems like all of his employees uh, are completely brainwashed every time they go and see him. This is what the employee told me. So how is Duskman brainwashing them? Is he making them watch horror movies? Is he making them do all sorts of extra things? Oh, no, no. They simply go into his office wanting one thing and coming out having no idea why they went in there in the first place. And not know he was gifted in that particular level. Hmm. Well, it is a discussion you may wish to have with him. Oh uh, yes, I think I, I think. Uh, <coughs> oh, pardon me. I think that would uh, end up being uh, probably for the best. Uh, I'm not sure as to how well Zarek uh, has been such a pain. What is that splashing? Raz reaches oh, his hand, thinking it's another piece of the scarf, and X pulls it back as Mr. Morgan comes out of the <laughs> river. Good evening, ah, Mr. Williams. Thaddeus, Thaddeus. Ah, good, good. I left it to you to tell the uh, the efficacy of uh, Mr. Knox's uh, information. Mm -hmm. well, just give me uh, one minute, uh, and uh, let me uh, just uh, make myself uh, comfortable. Yes, yes, do dry off a bit, yes. Uh. Oh. Don't you ever, don't you, don't you and yours ever get tired of getting so wet all the time and having to change clothes and always being so damp? Don't you uh, ever get sick of it? I tend to stay out of the water for electronic reasons. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Knox, uh, your advice was uh, most helpful today. Glad mm. to hear it. I only told them that uh, we had a a fight with him and destroyed him. Uh, why don't you go into the details? Oh, well, uh, by all means, uh, Soggy. Um, we had uh, spotted uh, Hon Tanley's uh, movement uh, before he uh, left to go uh, to the Prince's Haven, and uh, we followed him uh, under cover of darkness and night, and then uh, much, much water. It was uh, fortunate uh, we spotted him so soon because he uh, went on the offensive quite quickly. I was quite surprised to see him uh, carrying uh, fast Eddie. Hmm. Yes, yes, I heard he was uh, devoured by the prince's werewolf. Yes. Um, so, by the way, we uh, arrived to um, the party, so to speak, a little bit uh, late, and we saw 
Eddie uh, leveling a, a shotgun uh, at uh, the other people defending the Prince's uh, Haven. Um, Soggy was uh, quick enough to uh, simply um, go and um, disarm him and uh, run him relatively harmless while um, I uh, put a stake through his heart. Um, then uh, Hontani uh, created his own offensive and I was quite surprised to see various kindred uh, coming from him by all means from different dimensions. Uh, apparently as uh, several appear uh, just out of uh, the nothingness to uh, hang on to Mr. Tanley. Uh, even uh, Soggy was uh, stuck there uh, trying to wrench that thing's foot off. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I used your advice. I had a prepared railway spike I had sharpened up for such an arrangement and in a nice suicidal head-on air collision I launched myself at Mr. Tanley and plunged the spike deep into his heart. I got lucky. It worked. I knew it would do something. Sorry, Knox, go ahead. I don't mean to cut you off. Sorry, I just, I knew it would do something. <laughs> well, I thought you said that you were all very grateful that you were able to walk away with all your bits intact. Mr. Eddie. I'm really quite surprised to still be here, honestly. Maybe he was just overly intimidated at apparently the Lupin that was there and, and the magical mistral, mithril beings from a different dimension. Maybe that was just throwing him off his game. Who knows? <laughs> mm, perhaps. Quite so, quite so. I do look forward to never hearing that abomination of a laugh again. <laughs> Yes, yes, it's going to be a shame that we cannot use that laugh for that name to torment Mr. Zarek Duskin anymore. Mm, uh, that's not true. See how good of an impression you can do and record it, and then uh, have it play in various areas of his office. So it would make a wonderful prank. Now, I think that would be a fun little game. You should uh, definitely do that. Sneak into the buildings, go up through the windows and whatever else, and just plant cackle boxes everywhere. Uh, uh. That'll teach him to make sure he keeps himself in check of where he's supposed to be. So, but gentlemen, I, I appreciate your time this evening. Soggy and your words of wisdom as to which direction I should go seems to help. Will help me a lot. Oh, sorry, Grandpappy Soggy. Uh, Grandpa Soggy. Hop Pappy. I'm still playing with it. You are older than me, so I guess that makes sense. <laughs> Indeed, indeed. All right, have you been having uh, troubles, uh, Mr. Williams? Please let me know. I'll do my uh, best to handle them for you. Oh, that reminds me. Thank you for opening your mind or your mouth. That uh, reminded me of why I wanted to talk to you. run into Knox at some point. Uh, I know I have, I think I have a boon with one of you, or maybe it's a favor I can ask of my granddaddy, or... <laughs> Or I can get in the good grace of Mr. Knox and yes, I need you gentlemen to do me a solid. I need to Please. find out as much information and patterns and whatever else of Mr. Feld. There's a few of us in the clan that seem rather okay with him, and some of us feel like we have been fucked in our bitch's ass. What would you um, need to know, Mr. Fell? I've uh, had him as a uh, small-scale business part for quite some time. I don't trust him. I have a gut feeling that he might be a set at the way he always talks like a snake. I've known salesmen that talk less snaky than he does. Hmm. I will say that he was there as one of the kindred defending the prince's domain. Oh, Poor please tell me he had a, an unfortunate series of events. He did have an unfortunate series of events. He's lucky he made it out there alive. But he was in some pain, I, I, if that helps you at all. Oh, he's going to be in some pain for quite some time. Yes. He's not going to walk straight for a week. Yes, but mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I would appreciate it if you gentlemen, if we can keep this all between us as gentlemen and shake on it and agree that we are all gentlemen here, that we can, that you can do this for me with no extra boons or any word getting around of any particular way. I mean to seek financial ruin for my own personal <laughs> gratification. You're Mr. not the first person to ask me this, Mr. Williams. 
Well, so apparently, Fell is a serious problem and needs to be taken out of the equation. I will say this in front of my other family. Uh, Thomas Williams is family to me. Really? Yes, yes. As has the last uh, grandson in law, one may say. <laughs> yeah, so it appears the Ventry were quite thorough with your line. No offense, Soggy. Mm hmm. Uh, the demon Iris uh, is no more from what I understand, so... Well, maybe it's because not. that your line appears to have uh, that rare quality that always attracts the Ventru. Mm, perhaps, perhaps. I just uh, yes, uh, hope that their own life uh, are as good as their lives. Very well. If you were of um, blood and family... Uh, to uh, Soggy, uh, Mr. Williams, you uh, have our protection whenever you should require it. That fills me with a great sense of joy. It really does, and it means a lot knowing that the that this can help the elite lions between the bench through and the Nosferatu even more. Information and corporate influence always a good combination. <laughs> and with that, gentlemen, I do believe that we should. Uh, part ways, the business and things that I, I want to try to finish up this evening and see if I can uh, get those swords from Mr. O'Connell as a gift. He seems quite concerned mm -hmm. about the current events. So, uh, if you'll excuse mm -hmm. me, gentlemen, I'll bid you a good evening. Good evening, Mr. Williams. If we um, don't uh, speak uh, later this evening, I hope to see you uh, later in the week. Uh, well, most definitely, I hope so. Especially with the information that I would like. Thank you. And good evening. Good evening, Mr. Williams. Good evening. Good evening. What did I uh, miss, uh, Soggy? Oh, not much, not much. Discussion of old times, perhaps, uh, and then, of course, being able to tell Mr. Williams that the evil was dead, <laughs> and that now we shall have uh, maybe a, some modicum of peace. Huh? I also told him about uh, the werewolf, the... the uh, Blue find that the prince keeps, and uh, mm. I'm sure that rumor should get about uh, as the prince demanded it. Uh, Knox, uh, won't you see that those rumors slip around in the proper circles? All right. By all means, uh, Sobi, um, what should we do with the boon the prince has given us? Oh my, that is something, isn't it? Hmm. We were given a boon? We, yeah, Mr. Yes. Morgan and I uh, were given a boon, and I uh, uh. don't know exactly what to do with it. Yes, uh, anything we wish of the prince, we may ask of him. Yes, I don't know how far we should push that, but I think perhaps we should save that for a rainy day. One of our own gets in any races, it would be nice to be able to bail him out with <laughs> such a boon. I've got so many boons collecting up at the moment, I'm starting to forget them. Mr. Williams already owes me uh, two. Lady Orchid already owes us as well. Mm. Um, I believe uh, Dustman also owes us a uh, boon, and there's probably one other I'm already forgetting. You should get you a notebook. Indeed, a boon book of some sort. I always have a habit of losing such things. Excuse me just a moment. Uh, what is that awful noise? I'm glad everything went well. Yeah, so if it wasn't for your bit of advice, things could have turned out much, much uh, differently, Mr. Knox. Well, that's all that matters. Hmm. Well, it's much better than expected. Much better than I had feared. Yes, I think I shall leave my shirt on for these things in the future. Uh, it seems to be better luck, don't you? <laughs> I, I think uh, it's... might be a wise endeavor. Excellent, excellent. Uh, one thing, though, all that swimming and fighting and, uh, well, running in terror when I saw the lupine, indeed. Uh, all that has made me somewhat thirsty. Yes. Yes. Shan't we? Shan't we go find Sorry, something? Sorry, I didn't quite do. catch that. Do you appear to have? Um, let me give you some. Ah, I, I am thirsty. Thirsty, I say. 
Here's Mr. Morgan is a bit speechless. Yes, yes. This happens uh, all too often. It's only the having succeeded in what we were doing. Yes. Let us depart. Let us go and find hunting, or I will do so myself. I don't know if you younger folks really want to. Ah, always a pleasure hunting with you, Soggy. As long as no one gets murdered and we run have to run off. Yes, quite. Uh, this time, let us hope for a more peaceful hunt, yes? Yes. The three make their way off into the night to go hunting and get themselves a drink. Williams returns back into his car and heads back into the center of the city. Scene ends.